Okay, so the title of this uh, testimony is a, um, a Selfish Young Man into a Servant Leader. And I have a short Bible passage, which I believe is suitable for this testimony. Um, it comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 4 through 8. Uh, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also the interests of others. Have, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So this, uh, these verses remind us that at the foundation of our salvation even was Jesus, who was God, yet humbled himself and became a servant. So there's power uh, for others in our servant leadership. And if you see the underlined words, you see that we... Uh, can truly have this mind as well when we are in Christ Jesus. And we are asked by these verses to have this mind. So just a quick uh, bio about myself for your reference. Um, first and foremost, and most importantly, I'm a disciple that is a follower of Jesus Christ, the greatest of all servants, and I'm still learning from him. Uh, currently, I'm one of six over church overseers governing the LAUBF church. I'm also one of the middle school and high school youth leaders in what we call JBF and HBF. Uh, I work full time as a tax auditor. And I'm happily married to uh, Heather, who prayed for us earlier today. And I have a son and four daughters, uh, ranging between the ages of six through 15. Here's a couple pictures of the family. This is without me pictured. And then this is picture with me. I think last Christmas. Okay, so uh, I too, am still learning from Jesus what it is to be a good leader, which is a servant leader. But at the same time, I can confess honestly, that my heart, attitude and lifestyle has been truly molded in significant ways into a servant leader as I follow Jesus. My testimony will show this process. So part one, uh, growing into, a, into servant leadership uh, through leading one-to-one -one Bible studies. In 1997, I was a freshman at my college of Long Beach State University when I was fished for Bible study by a UBF Bible teacher. At my first Bible conference, a few months later, I believe I was born again as I understood God's love for me and I realized and repented of my sins. Uh, in particular, I found out early on that although a lot could be said about my sins, my main sin problems were in the categories of lust and a deep-seated selfishness. I remember one occasion in high school when I was out, when I was out with my friends at a t Taco Bell, and my own friend didn't have any money with him. Even though I had plenty of money in my wallet, I just let him go without a meal while the rest of us got our food. Now that doesn't sound like someone with potential at all for being a servant leader. But like Jesus's disciple Matthew, who used to be a selfish tax collector, but was changed immensely in following Jesus, so is the case with me. I knew God was working in my life through the UBF church. So even though I was a little stubborn for a couple months early on, I soon started committing my life to growing and serving with, within the UBF church, including joining a Genesis winter Bible study and common life. Then the summer after that, I accepted that God was leading my life and calling me to engage in the church's mission of reaching out to college students through one-to-one -one Bible studies. It was challenging because of my selfishness still with me, but I accepted it following Jesus. Through engaging in, the, in leading these many one-to-one -one Bible studies, God was using me as a, as a leader and molding my heart into that of the servant as I was constantly challenged to get outside of just thinking about myself, but rather get to know, pray for, and try to give other help for these Bible students. I was challenged by various words of God inspiring me to be a good shepherd for them and lay down my life for them. Practically, this meant giving my time 
attention, car rides to church, and sometimes buying food or drink. I think what I learned the most about being a servant during this stage of my life was the importance of sacrifice to be used as a Christ-like leader. And on the inside, God changed me a lot, actually, during these years to have a servant's type heart. However, my servant, my servant leadership for others wasn't without flaws in the process of growing. Even though I was willing to make more and more sacrifices for Bible students uh, I led and served, I also tried hard to enjoy something for myself along the way. For example, sometimes I tried to maximize the number of one-to-one -one Bible studies I led, not so much in order to truly serve these students, but so that I could say I had such and such number of one-to-ones, which provided me some respect among my church peers. Also, oftentimes, rather than aiming to help the student based on what was in his best interest, I aimed to get him to come to one event or another or do such and such a task because it would give me some human recognition or at least give me some feeling of accomplishment. But, but with these mixed motives, I wouldn't really hear or, or understand the Bible students' needs and wants at all, or very little. Um, and so I couldn't serve them in the best way. And sometimes I'd have a demanding attitude in the process, too. I recall one time a Bible student called me and told me he changed his mind and decided not to come to the Bible conference after all. I said some strong and angry words to him and then hung up the phone on him, throwing my cell phone on the passenger seat next to me in my car. I didn't really hear anything he said at all. All I knew is he's not coming to the Bible conference I wanted him to come to. Sometimes they, my Bible students could sense my mixed motives and called me out for it. Uh, knowing it was true, I had to repent several times for this. Not only through repentance, though, but also as God's love and the words of Jesus washed my heart, I matured over time and began to serve them well, really listening with deep focus on them, what they're saying. It's been a process of growth for sure, but through following Jesus' call, calling for me and learning his servant leadership, this once very selfish young man has been molded into someone who takes deeper and deeper concern for the well-being, especially the spiritual well-being of others I serve these days. Today, uh, Bible students in my eyes are not those through whom I fulfill an organi organizational goal or get myself recognition through. I have ardent concern for each Bible student and even the Bible students of others through our, throughout our church. And so most newcomers and young disciples that come to our church, I'm able to naturally talk to and serve with various words of encouragement, advice, or challenge. Uh, God also uses me as a servant leader in making disciples of some one-to-one -one students that don't even, that don't even come to our church and perhaps never will. Uh, part two, um, servant leadership in the family. So following Jesus in this way during the college years set the foundation for so many other leadership positions God has put me in since. I married in 2004. As the husband and father, of course, I am the leader of the family by God's design and command. However, it's quite obvious that just giving any instructions I feel like giving to my wife and kids is not right. It must be done with a servant's heart, not a stressed out and demanding one. While still growing, of course, I'm blessed to be able to say there's a servant's heart that has grown in me so that I can, that I can effectively lead them most of the time. My aim, of course, ought to be to make disciples of Jesus from among my kids, too and leading them in this way. And God recently, recently opened up a door with my work schedule so that my wife and I can go fishing for Bible students with our kids sometimes. In this way, we pray my kids too would experience on-the-job training and grow as disciples of Jesus and servant leaders, such as the process that happened for me. Part three, uh, servant servant leadership in our church's youth ministry. From around 2005, I was called to take on a significant role in our church's middle school aged ministry we call JBF, and this soon expanded into high school ministry we call HBF as well. So for about 10 years or so, I was considered the head JBF HBF leader, 
but worked with several other parents and other youth leaders to serve this ministry. In these years, I had involvement. In, in these years, I still had involvement in the UBF ministry too, uh, but a lot of my attention was directed towards serving this younger youth group. I experienced an even deeper servant's heart for this age group during these years in particular, more so than even for college students, and found many of my God-given strengths and childlike character helping me to be uniquely qualified to serve them from my deep heart. It started very simply, but grew into much more, including being a messenger in rotation for them, working with others to plan for and lead summer Bible conferences geared for them, starting up a Friday youth night meeting and various other special programs for them, uh, charity events, Bible studies, and other discipleship programs that were age appropriate for them. These, uh, during these years, I learned and grew deeper in humility to serve those who can't sit still long, who don't always show much genuine respect, to be honest, even sometimes directly disobeying instructions with a poor attitude, uh, among other sins and poor behavior. Of course, their behavior made me sad and maddened me sometimes too. But the humility I had learned and grown in from Jesus helped me keep a sober mind and not overreact most of the time, but rather wisely deal with the situations as a servant leader. Now, of course, now of course, their own personal faith is the most crucial factor for how they respond and if they actually grow as Jesus' disciples. But I think the humble servant leadership I've been able to offer due to the foundations established in me definitely helped them, uh, many, many of them in various ways. In this regard, some highlights include, um, first and importantly, being, being there for them, attending, attending their times of gatherings as much as I could. Uh, many times, uh, servant leadership for them has meant correcting them, sometimes rebuking, sometimes encouraging them. It also meant listening and considering the JBF, HBF members' opinions, even when in the form of a complaint, which is burdensome to hear. Sometimes it means asking for their comments and suggestions for planning activities and trying to change some things in the JBF, HBF ministry accordingly, even though I may personally like something different. And of course, sometimes it means saying no. I still do serve, uh, serve several roles as a leader for this JBF HBF ministry today, but missionary David Park, who will speak right after me today, became full-time staff, and so I've taken a lesser role um, time-wise than before. Uh, part four, uh, servant leadership as an overseer, as an overseer. In 2017, I became one of our church's overseers. Uh, I wasn't originally planning really to mention God's work through me as an overseer, but Pastor Ron encouraged me to, uh, to say something about it, so I will. Uh, as should be expected, each of the overseers are mature and good servant leaders themselves, and I believe are serving well for our church's interests. But over the course of the past five to six years, I've been an overseer. Um, there's been three issues of strife, I would say. I won't use any names because that would not be good, but two of these involved other leaders of influence within the church, and, and, and the other issue of strife uh, was, of course, handling COVID-19 related matters. For the strife concerning other leaders of influence, since I can't say, can't appropriately say much detail, I will simply say this. It was important to be a voice of encouragement to other overseers, as well as other concerned church members during these times. And I strove hard to do, the, to do so during these times in order to build up and promote unity in the church, laboring and exercising discernment while explaining and answering questions and concerns church members had in the meantime, while also being careful not to get in the territory of gossip or break trust with those who confided in me. Uh, some of the drama and efforts to, be, to bring resolution and healing were very tiring and burdensome, but yet important to serve. Uh, to tell you the truth, I actually do have some regrets and I think could have served some matters better. And so I have some prayer topics in that regard, but that's not really something to talk about here. In regards to COVID-19, this too was not easy at all to deal with. 
uh, especially because of all the combination of so many opinions in the church, my own opinions, my wife's opinions, so much information from outside sources, much of which was hard to know who to trust. And not only opinions about COVID-19 stuff itself, but also how the church should react and conduct ministry in the midst of it. The one thing I want to say in this regard is that a servant leader must be willing to endure hardships, going through pains with those he's serving, and keep his head as he does it. This is what Apostle Paul writes to the young leader Timothy from 2 Timothy. But, but you, keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. I believe I had my faults in the midst of the COVID turmoils. But as I kept my head and endured the hardships along with others, along with other overseers, we could love and serve our church body. I thank God for Jesus, the ultimate servant leader. I thank God for servant leaders in UBF who also set many good examples for me. My testimony is essentially that through following Jesus, a selfish sinner's heart could be molded into a useful servant leader for many. Thank you for, for listening.